we have now made our way upstairs and we're in the Smart exhibit and you're looking at Mr. Smart himself, joined once again by Amy Mackey, who is the museum educator here. So talk a little bit about this exhibit and some of the beautiful artifacts we're seeing. Well, Smart's Foundry, also known as the Brockville Novelty Works, was huge business here in Brockville. You know, it started out in 1854 and it continued through to the 1960s. And they made everything that you can think of out of cast iron. And I mean absolutely everything. That's right. And we are looking at some of the pieces here. I'm seeing everything from irons to metals to things that I don't even know what they are. <laughs> Looks like a, a peeler of some sort. Yeah. Um, and, and how did this all get founded? They just started up here in Brockville? Well, there was a small foundry that was here before. And Mr. Smart ended up buying them out and then made this huge empire, basically, right. in making cast iron, which is part of the reason why if you turn over a smart frying pan on the bottom there's a diamond with a G in the middle G oh. doesn't stand for smart it actually is the original kind of trademark from the foundry that was here before but they continued using that and it's on everything that smarts so me he was a very smart man he was <laughs> started this company well basically grew the company mm -hmm. to what it is and so talk about some of the artifacts we're seeing here on the ground these are old cast iron stoves yeah, so we have lots of cast iron stoves they are all sorts of different sizes of uh, cast iron frying pans the desk at one time they were making all of the axe heads for every Boy Scout in North America. This oh. was huge business. They even had their own hardware store. And the really neat thing about this business is it used to be right next door to the museum here where the park is. That's it's right. It's now it's completely gone. Completely gone. And one thing I notice about your museum is you have all these little sections for the kids yes. in kind of every exhibit. So you guys have a huge kids program here. Oh, a huge kids program here at the museum. We're always busy. We do birthday parties and we have things for March break and we do school groups and those sorts of things as well. And of course, if people want to have the birthday party here, you can also sleep over here. Is that right? For the Girl Guides and the Boy Scouts, guides we do have sleepover programs here, yes. And you were saying that it can kind of get a little bit creepy as well. Well, I suppose it, it could, but everybody's <laughs> imagination runs wild at night, doesn't it? Especially in a museum. It's true. And now we're kind of in the other section here at the, at the second floor, and this is where all the hats are. Now, this was another huge industry here in Brockville. It was, and uh, with a lot of these industries, so many people worked at them, but we don't have too much left on the ground to see them anymore, and that's part of the job that the museum does. So this exhibit is all about Stetson hats, but it didn't start out as Stetson's. It was the Union Hat Factory, then Walthausen, and then Stetson's had a factory here too. And most of the time we think about Stetson's as being either American or out in the Wild West, right. but they were right here in Brockville for a while. And I mean, the interesting thing to see is you kind of see the beginning of how the hats were made yes. and how they've evolved, and some of those we're seeing as huge fashion items even nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah, f folks still love to bring in their Stetson hats here to the museum as part of our collection committee meetings. We almost always have a Stetson hat or a Stetson hat box or something <laughs> like that. So they're still sitting around in a lot of people's cupboards and we should maybe start wearing them again. Uh, they are. They're a big, huge they're fashion great. trend right now. And you were saying this was actually not a very fun job. This was very dirty and tedious. It was because I don't know if you've ever taken a sweater and accidentally shrunk it. Well, they're doing <laughs> that on purpose. So you have to take fur and shrink it down to make it into a felt and then it had to be really hot, very damp to try and shape it into something else. They they called that part of the factory the swamp and it probably smelled about the same. Fantastic. And we could see some of the shapers down here that yes. they used as, I guess, molds for the head. Mm -hmm. Fascinating stuff here. Thank you so much for giving us a tour, a small tour of the museum because there's still That's much more that we didn't get to see here this morning. But of course, if you want to head here, you can come down to Brockville and check out the museum yourself or you can head to their website at brocklemuseum.com for all their information and store hours. Thank you so much for joining us here Thank today. Thank you.